interesting. Did, did I get the link and I just lost it in my inbox? Because I was looking for it. You usually send it out and I found it on the town site, but was, was I missing something? Um, I set the reminders to go out an hour before the meeting, a day before the meeting, and a week before the meeting. Wow, because I don't think I got, um, I don't. Huh. So I had one from last week. Subject was panelist for residence advisory committee. Right. From and last so Thursday. I didn't get there, I didn't get more recent ones than that. There's a function on the on the application on in Zoom. So when I click it, it should send it automatically a week before, a day before, and an hour before. Huh. It, it didn't. It did not. It did okay. not do hour or day. I don't know why. And maybe I just missed, you know. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't get the hour or day either. I just got the one from last yeah. Thursday. Yeah, and I missed that. But of course it is, you know, the Zoom links are on the calendar. So I, I thought it might be, it all worked out. Okay. It's interesting that you ended up in the panelist room. Yeah, using... because the calendar Zoom link is the public Zoom link, isn't it? Right. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, Nobody yeah. knows how this works. Oh, so how would I get in? Because the administrator would be keeping me in the waiting room or something like that, whatever. Correct. You would be out on the, yeah. All right. Well, it did work. So that's a whole, that's a whole other thing. Anyway, I, I don't care. Here I am. <laughs> Hooray. But I assume Keish is coming too, so we'll wait for her. Sure. So while we're chit-chatting, we just can't really... We're not going to start yet. Oh, but we do have a quorum, I will say. <laughs> Two of three. Let's wait. Um, I wanted to say, uh, we've been watching the new season of The Crown. Does anyone else? Have I've only seen the first episode, so don't talk about it. Oh, after I, 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 won't, I won't be a spoiler, <laughs> but we just saw the second one. Don't know. No, no, I'm not spoiling it. I'm not me. looking. <laughs> but uh, I would just say that the portrayal of Margaret Thatcher is something I will never, some scenes I, I'll just never forget. It was so superb. We've been watching British Bake Offs starting with season one and we're up to see, we just finished season three. It's good, no calories. Those are great. No, well, we also we also bake on the weekend. So oh, we getting good. the calories doing our own oh, baking. So it's inspiring you. <laughs> Funny. But yeah, Barbara in particular, but I can agree with her on this, is just doesn't want to watch anything stressful or political or anything like that. It's just all so stressful. So yeah. Yeah, I highly recommend, drink. yeah, I highly recommend I'll have what Phil's having or somebody feed Phil. Uh huh. He travels really? the world. Yes, he travels the world trying different countries' cuisines. And he's uh -huh. the writer for um, Everybody Loves Raymond. Uh huh. Where, so, where can you find it? It's on Netflix. Okay. It's uh, Somebody Feed Phil. And um, on every episode, he checks in by Skype with his elderly parents who are in Manhattan. And for me, that's like my favorite part of the show because cool. he, you know, they make fun of him. He makes fun of them. It's very entertaining from my perspective. I see Keisha. Should I, am I supposed to read that stuff about um, yes, pursuant please. to Governor Baker. Okay. And this is before we call the meeting to order. Okay. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting laws, general law, chapter 38, section 18. This meeting of the residence advisory committee is being conducted via remote participation. Um, now we do a roll call to check and make sure everybody's video and audio is working properly. So Jim, are you here? Yes, I am. Keisha, are you here? Yes. Connie, are you here? Yes, I am here. Recording Angela, the... are you here? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, and just a reminder, this meeting is being recorded. Did you start recording? Yes, this meeting is being recorded to the web and could be shown on Amherst Media and broadcast in the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Okay, our meeting is called to order. That was fun. Yeah. So first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes from the previous meeting, which was October 7th. Anybody have any thoughts or comments? Look good to me. Looks good to me. That's All fine. those in favor of approving the meeting, and we'll just say raise your hand if you're in favor of approving the meeting. 
I see three hands raised. The meeting has been approved unanimously. So I haven't done any interviews since our last meeting. So that's my summary. Keisha, have you been done anything? Um, I've done 15. <laughs> oh my God, I another prize. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything to report on them? Um, we agreed on seven. So, okay, so I was present for 15. There were 18 interviews and we agreed on seven um, to refer to the town council. Bert, can you just say which committee, please? The Community Safety Working Group. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, okay. That's right. I knew you'd been busy. <laughs> right. And Connie, how about you? Well, um, I think uh, he should have asked for a break after that, understandably. So I took um, CDBG and Munson Library. Um, and I, I, I think it was around eight. Uh, apologize for not counting. You might remember better. Angela, there were definitely more, a couple more candidates than slots for each of those. So that, yeah, I, I, that's, I think that's a stronger situation. Um, so those are the ones I did of late. Um, I, I did have a question just to, to follow up on that. Oh, so I saw, I think it was on the town's Facebook page, which I get that they were looking for members and they listed a number of committees and they listed the CDBG committee, and we had filled all the vacancies, I thought. So Angela, maybe you could update me. Did another vacancy come up after we did the recommendations? Yes, there is just one. Can, well, it, it's due to a resignation. Can you say who resigned? Um, off the top of my head, I cannot actually. Okay. And I, it actually, I, I'm wondering if it's someone who serves from another group who didn't oh. want to be who didn't want to be reappointed okay and so we view that as a vacancy and it and it gets posted it so it gets put out even though right yeah even though a little it, misleading it's, yes i wonder if there's a way to add a parenthesis or something uh when it when it comes because what it's unfortunate when we recruit, you know, we ask people to join and then they either hear nothing because we're not really, it's not in the normal vacancy route. It's a representation from, it's a set aside to, for a committee appointment. Right. I wonder if there's a way um, to annotate that. Because, you know, and just for me, it was a little distressing because I was like, wait a minute, we just did that one and we filled them all. Right. Well, it would have been nice for me to know what was going on. Yeah, and that happened to us with the uh, Disability Access Advisory Committee as well. We picked two people, we appointed them both, and then as soon as the person received their packet and read through the materials, realized it was way too much of a commitment and pulled out before getting sworn into service. So, right. right, but that wasn't a slot position. That was our open. Right. So is there a way to re-examine how that's put out when it's not really truly open absolutely yeah i can talk to paul and brianna about that okay so that could just be in our minutes of just a, a, a point um okay angela what can you tell us about upcoming interviews Paul and I met briefly yesterday. There are two vacancies on public art, but the chair of public art had asked for us to wait until the percent for art bylaw had been passed and then re, um, you know, do another push through all of our PR to get new applicants. And Public Shade Tree has two vacancies. Um, and so we just put a call out for that one. And then we, also, I think included Disability Access Advisory Commission on the most recent shout out for volunteers. So those are the, the top three. I, I'm with AGCOM, um, it's, a, it's a pretty specific board, a lot like water supply protection. And so 
we do outreach in a different way for boards that require some type of technical knowledge. So mm -hmm. AGCOM and local historic district, we have to dig deep because we're looking for someone to represent the real estate community. So we reach out to that um, clearinghouse for that profession and ask them for recommendations from within you know, that profession. Right. So Paul's on local historic, and then I think Dave Zomax helping me with AGCOM. And is there one vacancy on each? Yes. Okay, so not a lot of activity for us in the near future, it looks like. Mm, kind of a little bit, it'll feel like one-offs, because um, uh -huh. especially for the ones that have technical knowledge, it might be two people going for one spot. Yeah. Um, I, I'm happy to do shade tree if we get to that. You know, it's winter, so I don't think it's a huge rush. They will, I mean, they do their planning work, but they're not having their events or planting tree things right now. Um, so I don't, I don't know how uh, much of a rush there is, but I, I did, I think I did shade tree last time. And, I'm happy to do that one again. You know, the interesting conversation I had with um, the staff liaison for the DAAC was maybe it's time because of the work that they're doing and the, and the discussions they're having for them to have someone with ADA knowledge who might be a planner or an architect as part of the board for DAC. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that would mean some recruitment to get them into the, the pool. Of exactly, the exactly. Because that's kind of a niche, right? I mean, I don't have extensive knowledge, but. Right, because they do plan review, um, right. both development plans and sometimes building uh, plans for, uh, you know, sort of compliance and suggestions for improvement. Mm -hmm. But yeah, maybe a local architect or builder, somebody who's involved in it from that end, who understands the law might be useful. Yeah, I don't, I don't, um, I don't, anything else on upcoming interviews? No, we really, we don't have anything planned. I mean, with the un uptick in, in COVID numbers, uh, the core team for, the administration has been pretty busy, not just looking at numbers, but also kind of getting the infrastructure in place and discussing how we're going to tackle things like, you know, if we have to do a massive push for inoculations and all that stuff. So this has really not fallen off the radar, but is not right now at the at the top of the list in terms of putting it on a calendar. Yeah. Right. So, and, and all of the gr groups can meet quorums, so that's good. Yeah I, yeah, I was thinking maybe we could just, we, you know, keeping track of what's going on, where there's vacancies, some of this uh, targeted recruitment as it makes sense, but to kind of lay low over the next couple months, we've just done the big push uh, right. over the summer to fill up all the committees with the right. reappointment time. So I think we can just say this, this is a back burner, not a front burner issue. So I, I'd like to say that, but the one thing I forgot to mention is personnel board. Um, because we've had such turnover in the leadership of our HR department, that is a group that I think Paul is looking to shuffle up along with Donna Ray Keneally, the new HR director's help sooner rather than later. So uh, that might be one where the turnaround time might be quick and I might reach out to all three of you and say who can take what because um, we've had the same people on that board since 2016. Yeah, so if I could just add a footnote. So when I was on Select board. Um, sorry, my. Let me get the turn this cell phone off. Um, when I was on select board, I was the liaison to personnel, so I, I I went to a lot of those meetings over those years. I'm wondering, Angela, do you know is Charlie Sherpa still the employee representative? I don't know that information, and I and because. Evelyn came in and then left and Donna Ray has just been hired. I'm not sure that they've met recently. Okay. Uh, what's the new HR person's name? Donna Ray Keneally. Donna Ray Keneally. Okay. Okay, great. Thanks for the update. 
Um, okay, I guess we can move on to looking at this draft survey I sent you all. Yeah, great. Um, who wants to start? Comments? Do we still want to do some kind of survey or do we think it's silly? What do we think? I, I'm happy to go, Jim. You okay. Want, you want to call sure. me? Um, I, I like the idea of it, that we were going to do it. And um, I just made a few edits, you know, when I reviewed this last night. So um, if people have it up, I would just tell you what I was thinking we might do just, you know, it's another set of eyes on this. Um, on the first one, I rewrote it a little bit. It's the same, same idea, just um, how clearly was the interview and appointment process explained to you before your scheduled interview? And you'll see, Jim, um, a couple of them, instead of how well did you understand, I tried to switch it to how well was it explained? Because uh -huh. we don't really know what the, who understands what, even though it may have been explained well and they say it wasn't, that's a different issue. So this one, I just thought it was a little awkward preceding the interview, how clearly, uh -huh. so I, 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 can, uh, I can go back over that language if we want. Right, so you said, how well was the interview clearly, and appointment process, how yeah, clearly I'm, was the interview and appointment process explained to you before the interview? Yeah, before your scheduled interview. Yep, that's okay. That's so on that same vein, if you go down to the one- Yeah, change the other one too, yeah. yeah where it goes following the interview, how clearly, I said, how clearly was the interview and appointment um, the, uh, uh, process ex explained to you. And I think there's one more like that. And these are really minor. Um, oh, oh, this is a little bit different. The, your last one, the closing one, do you have any additional comments about the interview process and ideas for improving this process? Mm -hmm. Just to, and then I thought we could conclude with something perfunctory, like thank you for taking the time to answer these survey questions and then resident advisory committee and then put our three names so people know who's surveying and why we're asked who, who's involved and what you know who's putting this out uh-huh yeah i'd say if you can send the wording to angela yeah. she can put it in the minutes uh is that good angela yeah, no, that's great. If you want to send me your edits, that'd be wonderful. Oh, I mean, these are handwritten, so I'll type it up on the on the draft that Jim sent. Okay, that sounds fine. Or you can just take a photo of them and and text them to me. Either way. All right. If you're okay with that, it's your beautiful writing, Connie. Uh, not not when I'm <laughs> not on this one, but yes, thank you. <laughs> You'll see. You'll get it. You'd never so, want me to do that. I can say that. <laughs> so these are these are tweaks. So uh, I thought it was I thought it was a really Good idea. Um, um, I don't see Keisha anymore, but she's still there. Um, yeah, I'm here. She's maybe you drove her. away. I don't know. No, <laughs> <laughs> she looks like she's not in motion. <laughs> <laughs> um, any thoughts, comments from you? Um, I thought. It, I thought it was pretty good. I I was wasn't sure about some of the wording of some of the questions also, um, but I didn't type up any changes. But I thought it got to the heart of what you know you all were hoping to get uh -huh. from the the survey questions. Um, Angela, any comments thoughts from you? No, I think more information is is better. And, um, and we're asking a lot of people and it would be nice to know if, you know, I thought the questions really hit, like Keisha said, to the heart of what we need in terms of moving forward and how to streamline the process, especially in this time of COVID where, where everything is remote, it, it's a good time to do this. Uh-huh. So 
Angela, you can give us sort of the new wording or you can put it in the minutes. Um, and where do we go from here? Yep. Sounds good. Should so we start sending it out to people after their interviews? Do we want to start it in the new year or do we want to use the last four or five groups as, as huh. um, guinea pigs? I hadn't thought of that, but that's not a bad idea. I, I was thinking, let's go back maybe the last two months and, and use it. Um, I, um, if we agree or we could vote, you know, to accept this survey language as amended in today's meeting, then uh, we don't have to review it again. And I think we could, we could send it out and maybe a little intro to the email that sends it out from you, Angela, just saying this is new and we, we love it if you, you know, would respond to this and uh, it's our first time using it and we're gonna, it's a kind of a test run. So Angela, I assume you have the software to package to set it up and to get the responses back and- I have lots of options. I have um, SurveyMonkey, which uh -huh. has lots of tools in terms of creating bar graphs and pie graphs and mm -hmm. stuff yeah. on responses. Um, and then I have um, Microsoft Forms, which from my perspective, doesn't give us the data breakdown that we need, but is very user friendly and kind of, and I can put it in both and see what you prefer. Uh huh. Yeah, that might be a good next step is to send it to the three of us and have us respond. Yeah, let's do a, you know, our and, big survey. Yeah. And we can't, you know, by email, we can't talk about whether or not we like the format, I don't think but we right, can respond correct. and Angela, you can tabulate the responses so we can see what it looks like from the three of us. Sounds good. We Great can idea. even make up a couple pretend people and add some pretend responses <laughs> just to make your graphs look more interesting. <laughs> Send right. it to our pets. <laughs> yeah, so that way, Angela, you can be comfortable with it. And if you're happy with the way it works, I'd say, like Connie said, we can have a vote here on it, but you can go ahead and send it out. Okay. So, so I'll, I'll move that we accept the uh, uh, interview um, follow-up survey as amended. I second that. All in favor, raise your hand. We'll just do it visually. I see three hands. So that's been accepted unanimously. Um, cool. Um, I didn't, one thing, I don't know if this matters now that we've accepted, I just want to ask one other question of Angela. Um, you know, I tried to phrase them all so we can have, people can do a zero through five response. I don't know if you like zero through five as opposed to one through five. And do we want all the fives to be the more positive thing and the zeros or ones to be the more negative or do we not care? Cause they're really, we're, because we're going to be looking them as granular as separate questions. Words, so I, I don't really have a preference and affective scales aren't my area of expertise. I would defer to the group. Does anyone know the convention? Like does five usually mean better or does it usually mean worse? I, I would say to drop the zero because I think it might be confusing, uh, especially if one is the highest, then zero might be, but one well, five. You, it's, it's more of a convention to have the five or 10 or whatever be the positive and the zero mm -hmm. one to be the negative. You know, there's only one question that how did you feel about the length of the interview where I have zero way too short, five way too long. So really the three is the best it's, answer. All the others, the five is the best okay. answer. So, but I, I yeah, think that's yeah. okay. Yeah. It gets people to pay attention to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so three is the mama bear, just right. Yeah. Um, okay. So it sounds like we already voted. We're going to accept as amended. Angela's going to send us a survey and we're going to respond just so she can make sure it all works. And then she's going to send it out to everybody. Perfect. Um, 
is the data that re you receive back considered public data that we can share with people will share with people or is it considered private internal data or do we care so we can ask we can make putting a name on it um optional but then with the way that technology works we will have all of the data from where it emanates and also the email address will come back with it so mm -hmm. it's kind of a we can tell them that we'll strip their personal information off of it and just use the raw numbers if you if we want to go that direction anything that comes in to my email is considered public record okay so it's public record but i i would say in it that we'll strip the right personal information off of it because if we had it on our agenda and we were talking about the results somebody could uh you know see that or report on it or amherst indy for just an example could pick that up and that would be okay because it wouldn't have in our discussion any identifying information if they wanted to go as far as to do a public records request to angela to figure out who would respond and that's a different thing but if in our the info that flows to us in our conversation we don't know any identities at least you know somebody listening to our conversation wouldn't have that right and and i just feel we don't we don't need the identities for our committee we just want to know overall how we're doing and what can be improved or not which we get from right. the, the metadata and not from the right. people okay right. cool um, I don't see any public, so I think there's no public comment. Um, anything else anyone wants to talk about? Um, this, I don't know if it's not known for you. I probably should have brought it up when we we're talking about how our past interviews went, but just to say, I was really struggling after the last two committees I did about rejecting people. I was feeling like, part of this job I don't like so this, uh, is when we have more people than slots and we're we're rejecting people sometimes we're rejecting somebody who's really quite a good candidate but it wasn't the right time or the right fit and then you know I, I got to interview somebody a bunch of times and different for different committees and continually not getting an appointment and it just I, I, it's just something I struggle with. I mean, I know it's part of the, what this job is, but I don't know. I'm trying to think of a way to yeah. feel okay about that. I guess I think for the most part, people coming into it understand that. I know I can't even remember which one now, but I know I had one set of interviews sometime in September, October that had, you know, one open spot and five people who were all fantastic and mm -hmm. yeah. and it happens sometimes and it's it's great when you get that many people who are interested and you know i feel that paul and angela are pretty good about following up with people and telling them you know you were fantastic but there's only a limited number of spots and you know i think it's it's sad to say no to people but it's a better scenario than if we didn't get enough people who wanted to be on committees. And we're never gonna get just the right number who wanna be on committees. It's, no, I know. You know. It's Even been a really, yeah, it's been a really interesting time um, because people are reevaluating how they want to spend their time. And so what I'm finding from a recruitment standpoint is the more I reach out to people and the more I try and get a diverse mix of people for the vacancies that we have, Never before have I heard so many responses of, you know what, I'd really like to, but at this time I have other priorities. Hmm. That's interesting because I would have almost guessed you'd get more people want to do it because they're just sitting around with nothing else to do. Yeah, it's been it's been fascinating to kind of uh, I and I and I am um, amazed at the amount of time that we're spending doing outreach work on a really one-to-one -one level trying to get, especially I, I'm thinking back to the last two or three groups where there are certain charges that are written very specifically about the sections of town from which the people have to come. Like 
for the Munson, you have to live in South Amherst or it's suggested that you live in South Amherst and use the facility in order to be on the board of trustees for that group. Yeah, I was impressed for that one where you said you had two applicants for one spot. That's really good for the Munson. I think we had three. Yes, you had, well, you had three for two. Three for two, three for two. Yeah. It was good and there were strong candidates. So that was, that was good. It, it, maybe there's sort of a cycle to all of this because when we first transitioned from select board to town council and it was kind of like a new beginning and a lot of excitement, there was a, right. a, a rash of new volunteers and now we're, we're just in a different time out, yes. you know, in the community, yeah. in the world. So it's like the flow. It's a good time to do the survey. Yeah. Okay, good. Great, good, good comment. Anything else or are we ready to adjourn? Uh, what about next meeting? Do you wanna meet in December and see if we've caught any fish with the survey? Um, I don't know, you think, or do we wait till January? Go either way. Keisha? I don't have a preference. I mean, I'm at work now, so like I don't have a preference. <laughs> I would just be able to come from work you know sit in my car like now i can do it while I'm at work, so it doesn't matter um what's the likelihood we'd have responses by december to look at judging from my conversation with certain individuals i think i think we'd have responses for all the uh -huh. reasons that we've just discussed uh -huh. like I, I think we would definitely have a handful of responses especially from the last two months so, okay, I would, so I would suggest, Jim, why don't we do a short, you know, let's assume it'll be short. Our main agenda item will be looking at responses and that may be when we want to tweak the survey based on what, what people say. Uh -huh. So Tuesday, December 15th, how does that sound at 11 o'clock? Uh, all days are equal right now to me. Yeah, I mean, right now that looks great for me. I just, I want to mention to the group that, um, in addition to sending the survey to you, I'd like to send the survey to Paul. Oh, definitely. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I just, um, I'm sorry. I just pulled up my calendar and noticed on that day, I have a haircut appointment in Northampton at 12 o'clock. Those are pretty sacrosanct. So if we could either pick a different day or do it at nine o'clock or something like that. How about Wednesday the 16th? good for me that should be fine for me okay and did you say 10 o'clock jim um 11 again 11 again okay yeah sure. wednesday the 16th at 11 yeah cool great okay thanks everyone um thanks everyone i'm all in favor of adjourning this meeting say aye by raising your hand bye, bye. we all want to adjourn okay yeah. this meeting is adjourned Okay, bye. Stay healthy. Wash Thank your hands. you, everybody. You too, yeah. Angela. Bye. Mm -hmm.